Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to another weekend hustle. <laughs> I don't know why these seem to fall on a weekend when I have so much other stuff going on, but here we are. So this weekend hustle is Mary Kay Andrews. I have two books by her I need to read. The first one is Bright Lights, Big Christmas. And the other one is Summers at the Saint, which just came out Tuesday. So I've got those two to finish. I have about an hour left in Golden Gate, City Spies, number two by James Ponty, which I'm in the middle of reading. I'm also in the middle of The Familiar. I have to get to a certain chapter. And I also need to read by Tuesday. Um, I need to read Kidnapping Cold Case for my buddy Read with Sharon. In addition to the... Um, the like devotional book that we're reading with my Bible study group, which is Even Exile by Rebecca, Rebecca Markle. Can't say that I'm necessarily enjoying this one. In addition, Marcus and I have some stuff we need to take care of today. I also want to get an oil change, get my nails done, getting them cut down a lot. And <clears throat> also, did I say oil change? I want to get an oil change. And then just some other stuff that I want to do when I get back here. Don't even know what those things are yet. So. It's also a rainy, crappy day, which is right up my alley because I like the crappy day part. Not necessarily the rain, but it's much cooler. I think we're in like the 50s again as opposed to the 80s, so I like that. Um, and yeah, I got to get myself together. I'm not washing my hair today, though I should, but it's raining out. It's just going to look crappy and get frizzy, so we're just going to work with what we got going on. Anyway, so let's see how much we could get done because... I would like to accomplish all those things. I would like to finish both Mary Kay books. I'd like to finish the Golden Gate book. I'd like to get to where I need to be in the familiar. The um, the kidnapping book, I can wait on that one for Monday and then just push myself, but we'll see where we go. Anyway, I will uh, update you guys as I go along. Welcome to the vlog. Hey everyone, um, sorry it has been a long time since I got back, filmed an update. It is now Saturday, 1 p.m. Yesterday, Mark went, and I went out and did the things that we had to do. Uh, it took a lot longer than we thought. I thought I was gonna have time to do oil changes in the morning, that didn't happen. I thought we were gonna have time when we got back, that didn't happen. So we did what we had to do, got my nails done, got them shorter, this like, light fuchsia color which I like springy um yeah and that was it we're like kind of just like going through going through something right now so we're just like that's on our minds all the time we're talking about it all the time when we're not even together we're doing research for this all the time so just trying to work on that um and this whole week I've been completely off, like come home and do nothing. So, or just the bare minimum. Anyway, so got up today, took a shower, washed my hair, which I really needed. I just ate some egg rolls, like frozen egg rolls. My eyes have been bothering me, which is why I'm wearing my glasses. Um, yeah, that's it. So right now I'm in the process of playing Pop It, watching YouTube, and listening to my book. I'm still listening to Bright Lights, Big Christmas. I have about 41 minutes left in this book. And hopefully I'll be able to jump onto the next one, Summer at the Saints, which is kind of the opposite. I'm doing Christmas and then doing summer, so... And I was thinking just to get out of the house for a while, I might go like go read in a park or something like that, just to get out of the house, get some vitamin D. It's not super hot out right now. It's currently 63, which is the high for the day, which is perfect. So yeah, I might go do that. Just go hang out in the park or something like that. So just to get out, should go get my oil changed. Maybe I'll go do that as well. So I don't know. That's where I'm at. Uh, just listening to the book. So I'll catch up with you when I finish or when I move on to the next thing. Okay, so I just finished Bright Lights Big Christmas by Mary Kay Andrews. 
Um, so in this one, there is a family, the Collivers, who run a Christmas tree farm in North Carolina. The brother, crap, Murphy and his dad have always taken a trailer, gone up there, uh, gone up to Greenwich Village and sold Christmas trees for years. Like that's always what they've done. They have a spe specific spot that's like permitted out to them and that's their thing. So, um, Murphy's parents got divorced when they were younger. Carrie, his sister, spent most of her time with her, spent most of her time with her mom. But now something happened with the dad, health issues. So Carrie goes along and helps Murphy. And it is like living in this dumpy ash trailer that has like no bathroom and <laughs> like the heat is minimal. And basically like they just plop down in this spot. They sell their trees on the lot. Murphy's a little annoyed because it's like she's coming along to help and that's not been the case in the past. Um, she's kind of at a, carries at a crossroads in her life and this is just something to do for now. So she goes and you meet like a cast of characters in Greenwich Village that help them out. People that work at the deli across the street, excuse me, um, people that live in an apartment building which it's uh, the guy, uh, the main, the guy that lives in the apartment building's name is Patrick. I forget his wife, ex-wife's name and his son, Austin. They become main characters. There's this man that walks around in the neighborhood, Hines. He is one of the main characters. Claudia is a love interest of Murphy, who, who is a self-described mountain man. And it's just all the people that, that, that they meet, blah, blah, blah. all the people that they meet while selling the Christmas trees, um, just seeing the kindness from everybody. Like um, one of the people that work uh, on the deli, they like let Patrick and Carrie take showers there because they always give them one of the biggest, best trees. It was fun to see like the people that would come up and like bargain with them or not bargain because it's Greenwich Village. They can afford these like $1,600 Christmas trees Murphy would go deliver them. Um, they had this, um, I can't remember his name, but like this high school kid that came along and he would be doing some of the smaller trees on his bike, like with like a little cart thing. Uh, there's a controversy when like some other people set up across the street and start selling their trees and that becomes a part of it. Um, and then, so Patrick is going, is the love interest for Carrie and his son, Austin, he starts like writing a book with her and Hines and it's like them telling a story and they keep going along with the book. And uh, it was just so, so sweet. It was like on so many levels, like the people in the village that help out the Collivers as well as just seeing what they do for each other. Um, even seeing Patrick's relationship with his ex-wife and how they co-parent Austin the people that just take care of the Collivers while they're there for the season. Carrie and Murphy, like, they're a few years apart and didn't really grow up together because of the divorce. Seeing, like, their relationship during this time. The things that Carrie goes through personally, just, like, learning about herself. Hines being the older wise man, like, kind of spreading knowledge to all of them. Um, even the woman who owns, like, the Chinese food place, like, just her kindness and even at the end, like there's a, a, a grandmother, she is one of the people in the neighborhood. She really can't afford a tree for her granddaughter and Carrie winds up giving her one for like two bucks. Just seeing all like the sweet things that happen. Um, it was just so heartwarming. This is like, I always say like Mary Kay Andrews Christmas is like on the level of Debbie, Debbie Maycomer. Absolutely love it. This was such a great one. This was, I know I don't normally ever say this, but this was narrated by Catherine Mack. Finerney, who I actually love as an author, uh, an audiobook narrator. She's actually going to narrate the next one, so be right back into it with her. Yeah, this was such a such a good story. Five stars. Absolutely loved it. Not that I needed a reminder of why I love Mary Kay Andrews, but absolutely do. So um, it's 2.30, 2.37 to be exact. I feel like I should go out, but I don't want to go out. Um, Tomorrow's Mother's Day, so I'm kind of validating it with, well, I'm going out tomorrow. Um, 
but yeah, we'll see. Maybe I'll go outside for a little bit. It's kind of like, I don't know if you could see like the window, it's a little bit breezy. So I don't know. I don't know. Now I'm just babbling. Anyway, probably going to jump into that next book. Um, I'm also watching a video on somebody leaving Mormonism because I don't know if you guys know, like my side fascination is cults and people leaving cults. Um, yeah, so I've got that. I could get into a couple of my other books. I still have the familiar over here I need to get into. Just this hustle weekend and stuff that Marcus and I have going on. It's just making me feel overwhelmed with stuff. So, all right, enough babble. I'll get into the next book and let you know what I think. Okay, just a quick update. Oh, I have no idea what time it is. It is 4.30. I went on a walk, talked to my sister on the walk. Just got off the phone with Marcus. He's going to bring home pizza tonight. Wrestling's on tonight. In the meanwhile, I am going to get started on Summers at the Saint. Good morning, everyone. It is a little at like 10.40 on Sunday, so happy Mother's Day. Um, I am going to meet up with my mom and brother and sister at 3 o'clock for like a late lunch, early dinner for my mom. Um, we are going to Famous Dave's, like the barbecue spot, because we all like it. And there used to be a bunch around here. Now there's just one. So, and it's usually not a place people go for Mother's Day, so it won't be busy. And we go at an odd time, so it won't be busy. So, Anyway, we're going to be doing that later on. It is right now a crappy rainy day outside. And yeah, that's it. Got up this little while ago, laid on my heating pad for about a half hour because my back and shoulders are hurting me. Just achy. I didn't sleep well. I'm done complaining. I'm just saying what I did. Um, so yeah, so I am in the Summer at the Saint by Mary Kay Andrews. I have just under four hours left. And I am absolutely loving this book. Um, absolutely loving it. So I will catch you up when I am get more done. And yeah, that's it. I hope you guys are having a great Mother's Day in whatever capacity that means for you. And yeah, I will get back with you guys in a little bit. Okay, it's almost 8 o'clock. I have an hour and 24 minutes left in the book. And you know when you're just about to get like some gossip, some like the tea is about to be spilled, the mic is about to be dropped. That is exactly what's about to happen right now. So I was like, no, before it happens, let me stop the book. Let me go get myself something to drink, grab a snack, and then come back and hear what it is. I'm just like so excited right now. So just to give you a quick recap, went to Famous Dave's with my family to celebrate Mother's Day. We had a great time brought Marcus back a meal and went food shopping after that and then wound up talking to one of my neighbors so all right I got that much left Ugh, I'm so like like I know something's about to happen but it's it, it's more like that like you know what's about to happen but you're like who is it gonna be type of thing so all right let me go I will catch back up with you guys when I'm finished with this book okay so I finished it's 11 23 I finished like five minutes ago so one, I'm proud of myself that once again, Weekend Hustle paid off, got both books done. Kind of sad that it's over, but I thought it was a great, perfect kickoff to like beach reads, summer reads, a chiclet summer type of thing. So that worked out perfectly. All right. So this was Summers of the Saint by Mary Kay Andrews, obviously. And in this one, The Saint is a hotel called The Saint Cecilia that everybody calls Saint. It's down in Florida. And so either you were like this rich country club type of person, which they'd called The Saints. And if you couldn't afford that, you lived on the other side of town, you were The Aints. So that was like a little thing in the book. So in this one, there was a woman named Tracy and her friend and... So when Tracy was younger, she saw the saint, she fell in love with it. She was like, I'm going to live there someday. She had gone there like as like as a kid, she went there for a birthday party, absolutely fell in love with it. Her and her friend wound up like being lifeguards there as like teenagers. And then at college, she 
fell in love with Hoke, who was one of the sons of the owner of the hotel. They got married. Story, story starts off we're at adults already. And Hoke was killed. So she's now been running the saint. Hoke had a brother. Oh, what the hell was the brother's name? Okay, can't find the brother's name. Let's call him Richard for the obvious reasons. Um, and actually, I just saw I was mistaken. It's off the coast of Georgia. I was thinking Florida because a couple people come up from Florida to work there. So now in the current time, she's running it. Um, hoax brother Richard. He um, he kind of like runs another side of it, like the holding side, the real estate side of things, while Hoax had owned the hotel. Anyway, so it's kind of been going down a little bit hill. We're downhill. We're after the pandemic, trying to get people in there. Nobody wants to work because the new generation doesn't want to like bust their ass working somewhere for a summer. Um, and I do see this in like my own real life when I'm down in Ocean City. Like so many places will, won't even open till after 4th of July because they can't even get people to work till then. So whatever, it's a thing. Um, and you definitely got like the dirty dancing-ish vibes like, oh, this isn't as like a modern cool thing to do anymore. Anyway, they got some new people in. Um, what the hell's her name? Ellie? Is that the main character's name? Wow, I just finished this. Tracy. <laughs> what you, Ellie? Tracy, um, she hires a couple new people because people left or weren't going to come back. She hired a couple new people. She convinced her niece to stay on as like guest relations. She even took like this old building on the property and like turned it into dorms to try to like entice people to stay. Like, to work and stay there like she'd offer like free housing because like most places this is a tourist town and all of the rentals around it are super expensive where these people couldn't even afford to like live there just to work so to her this was the plan so she had um hired a a waitress that she came across a bartender um, a waitress she came across a new chef and then like a couple other people, like a pool kid and somebody else that had gotten hired. Like one of Richard's friend's sons got in trouble. So like this was his punishment for the summer. Anyway, so they're trying to rebuild up the hotel. And this is, I don't know, this is like, I've seen this a couple times. This was like in one of the Ellen Hildebrand books. Um, forget what it was called. But again, it's like, you got to like, and I've seen it in other books too, where you've got to like, you have this like, dying hotel or whatever and you've got to like build it back up again um there's a murder that happens or a death that happens that turns out to be a murder um telling that isn't really a spoiler because it's very obvious that's what it is and there's so many different aspects of things that are going on that you're like that shady that shady what's going on here what are we doing here and who to trust who not to trust you've got um so richard's um daughter parish is working there she has a stepmother who's you know the typical typical stepmother type of person and or stereotype of a stepmother and yeah it's just the story of like everything unfolding there so when they were younger uh when um tracy was younger and she worked as a lifeguard there was a kid who I wouldn't say drowned, but he was killed at the pool. And that has been something that is resurfaces again in this story as well. I don't know. It was just so good. So many things happened. Again, when I said before about the, um, like, oh, they were going to do a big reveal of something. It was what I thought it would be. Uh, it was so good. Absolutely five stars. I, like, I, don't, I can't even talk about it because like, I'm going to be giving away so much absolutely loved it five stars so got this done uh another weekend hustle done and my brain is fried for what I have to do next so anyway thank you guys so much for watching let me know if you plan on reading either one of these books or if you have read either one of these and what you thought of them thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time Oh, that's where we're at.
that. <laughs> Uh. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Your support means a lot to me and I love connecting with our amazing community. If you enjoy my content, please like and subscribe to stay updated with my latest videos. Thanks again and I'll see you next time.